let's get straight back into it. Uh, we've been led by Dr. Dave Rizzi from our major sponsor today, the National Climate Change Adaptation Research Facility. The panel session focuses on, focuses on social impacts and what we have to do to particularly protect, protect the vulnerable members of our community. About David, he is an environmental scientist with 20 years experience in water quality, estuarine and marine quality, ecology and natural resources management. Dave is the president of the Australasian, Australasian chapter of the Society of Wetland Scientists. NCARF provides an opportunity for Dave to use his experience and skills to ensure that the work they do with their partners contributes strongly to the capacity of Australians to adapt to climate change and to assist researchers to build skills in the area of synthesis and integration. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Ron. Thanks, Ron. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I guess before I introduce our uh, four speakers to talk to us about how people will respond to climate change, I've got to give you the obligatory word from the sponsor. So I thought I'd take you through a bit of a cook's tour about what NCARF's doing. We're really glad to be involved in the um, work today at the, the, the event today, and you can see how many um, presentations have been given by people who've been funded through NCARF. And, um, so uh, it's terrific to be here, and hopefully by the end of the day, not only we have seen some of the results from our study, but now you know a bit about what we, what we do and what we are doing in the next few months. So, yeah, this is um, essentially, if I click up the NCARF mission, which you guys are back, won't be able to read, but um, I've made a couple of things involved, and I think this is really important um, about what we do, and it's really about how we can deliver the scientific information and research needed by to support decision makers in government, in vulnerable sectors and communities in how they can manage the risks of climate change. And I guess um, bolding out the, the, the needs of those end users, what we term end users, is what we're all about. We're not about um, getting research done that will make um, shelves get full of dust over time. We're about getting research done that actually helps people make changes and, and be prepared for, for the effects of climate change. So what are we doing in NCARF? We've got um, a number of adaptation research networks and um, any of you who aren't members of those should think of joining them. Even though our um, lifespan ends in a few months' time, a lot of our networks do intend to continue on um, and are looking for other avenues of how they can um, support themselves doing that. And um, so people who join those networks do get access to a lot of information from researchers but also get to engage with their um, people who are involved in similar interests to them. We also have um, a major body of work, which is about research funding and management, and we have two areas there, our thematic research and our synthesis and integrative research, and I'll talk a little bit about those in a second. And then importantly for us right at this moment in time are the knowledge communications activities. How do we take the information that's been generated and get to people? So, um, Essentially, what, I, what we did with our research was to set a comprehensive national agenda, and I think that's the first time it's been done internationally, where we work with people in the um, MUs communities and with researchers to look at where we needed to do research, what were the priorities, and how we could start to focus on addressing those. Um, we then knew, um, undertook a series of end user driven research, and, um, and uh, you'll hear me say this a lot, but with substantial end user engagement. We really did recognize that if you don't get um, engagement with people who are going to use the research that you do, you don't get the research outcomes that you're hoping to achieve, and you probably do end up with good pieces of research, but they end up getting in journals or, or, or not accessible to the people in need information. And I guess importantly with work we do is, is that focus on delivery of those research products to people in an easily accessible manner. So there's no point in saying get to the straight research, we've worked with their to do it, and we give you something that's completely unintelligible unless you've got seven PhDs, two masters and on. So I um, really do try and take the research that often is very complex and deliver it to people in ways that they find useful. We've got um, a number of different thematic research areas and I won't go through these um, in any detail except to say that they range from a wide um, air, um, variety of areas through biodiversity through to um, social, economic and institutional dimensions. And I guess over the years, the important thing is that we've got 96 projects that have been done in, in, this, in, in these particular areas, and a lot of those will be coming out um, very soon, and you've seen some of the results today, and we'll see some more of those results in a moment. Um, we also have an area that we call synthesis and integrative research, and that's where we start to pull things together. So we know that decisions are not made 
correctly if you think of them only if you deal with them in a, in a single sector pro uh, approach. And you really do have to start to trade things off and have the tools to be able to do that. And so we've done a lot of work around um, particular areas of research where we work with end users, look at what their needs are and try and pull information that's, that's already been generated to develop new knowledge that supports people to make decisions. And there we've got 44 projects that have either been completed or are um, undergoing a review at the moment. So a lot of information coming out very soon. So I guess as, as um, we begin to think about what is our pathway um, from research to action and how we ensure that is by having it used and engaged throughout these projects. That often means that people who have been involved in the projects get exactly what they need, but it also means that we can get things out to the broader um, community and get uptake by them because we can learn as we go and we try and work with our research teams to attend events such as this or to hold specific workshops around their work to get that information out to end users. Um, we do have that um, focus on delivering easily accessible information we hope for timely delivery often. Um, that often leads us running around with sticks and, and um, having folks to try and get things out of the researchers because they always want to get things done really well and often we need the information out quickly. But we do recognize that high quality research outputs are important. Our researchers need to get stuff into journals because otherwise they don't get promotion and they're not going to stay in that field. We do need to recognize that. And I think having research in international journals and that sort of thing also gets us validation of the work that we're doing. And so we're always trying to get that balance right. Um, I guess just finishing off with the uh, rubber hitting the road is um, we do have a focus on getting reports out as soon as we can. Um, we're doing a lot of activities around Australia, um, constantly looking for more opportunities to get things out to people. A lot of targeted events, and we've got this today, next um, Friday we're running a, well next Thursday we're running a, a workshop on, on flooding in, in Brisbane, um, and a lot of events such as that. So, Please keep an eye on our website. There's new reports coming out all the time. Um, we have a local government portal which will um, deliver information through people in local government without having to trawl through all the stuff that might not be relevant to them. And tomorrow we're also launching a, um, a business and in in infrastructure portal which will help the, that community get better access to the information that they need. So that's our website there, and um, yeah, there's always new stuff on it. So please. Keep your eye on that. And having um, talked about what we're going to, uh, what we do, I'll um, now just introduce you briefly to our panel members. Um, we have four, as I said, people talking this afternoon. Um, first up, we'll have um, Professor Peng B. Um, Peng is a professor of public health medicine from the School of Population Health at the University of Adelaide. He's got wide experience in identifying and managing environmental health problems, especially the impact of climate change on population health. So Ping will be followed up by um, Andrew Beer. Um, Andrew is a professor at the University of Adelaide, and his research interests include homelessness, regional leadership, regional economic development processes, and housing policy. He's a board member of the Regional Studies Association and was a member of the South Australian Government's Minister's Strategic Housing Advisory Committee from 2006 to 2010. Following Andrew, we have Arusiak Seboyan. Arusiak is a recent Australian Research Council Fellow at the Australian Population and Migration Research Centre at the University of Adelaide. And she has a PhD degree in Sociology from Arizona State University and a specialisation in Medical Sociology and Demography. And last but not least will be Melissa Mercy Gray. And Melissa is a Senior Lecturer in Geography, Environment and Population at the University of Adelaide. And she has research and work experience in Indigenous Resource Management, Coastal Management and Community Engagement. So I think we'll have some interesting um, presentations from the four of these guys and then we'll get some discussion going around the room. So thanks very much.